We are here today with the founder of Kintrack, Cedric. Thank you so much for making the time to meet with us. Thank you. And let's just start right away with talking about what exactly is Kintrack. Before answering your question, I'm going to start uh, to tell you about uh, a short history. Uh, you know, and since 2014, here in DLC, uh, we are facing a lot of problems. And with that problem, we have also have like problem of insecurity in the country. In 2017, the NGO called uh, Invisible Children has like uh, recorded about 129 people who has been kidnapped. This just between January to April. And in 2018, the same NGO has recorded 137 people have been kidnapped, especially in the east part of the DRC. And children also have been kidnapped. And this is a very big problem. So we, we shouldn't to do something about it. Not only people, but we got also vehicles uh, that, that have been stolen. And also people are, are stolen the, the fuel of, uh, on the tank of the vehicle. So that's why we created Kintrack. Actually, Kintrack is, a, is an app that has been uh, built to, to solve that kind of problem. Uh, the kidnapping of the children, and also to look at the vehicle which, is, which has been uh, stolen. Kintrack is do, is do like the real-time tracking for cars, for trucks, and for children. So parents can look at their, their children every places they are, and anywhere and anytime. So this is Kintrack. Wow. So basically what you're doing with Kintrack is um, you started Kintrack in response to heightened insecurity with regards to the safety of your cars and also children getting kidnapped. Yes, but not only. Not only because in Kintrack, the company also can uh, use the, that software to track their cars, their trucks, and also to manage the fuel cons consumption. Just because Kintrack have the capability to give like the traceability of how the fuel has been consumed uh, on, the, on the car. So this is a tool that help enterprises to monitor their uh, fuel consumption. So what does it look like for uh, the, the users, like the user experience, for example, for the kids? What, uh, is it a bracelet? Is it a chain? Or how does it, um, how does it work? OK. Uh, actually, for children, we use the bracelet. This is a bracelet that we use uh, for children. It's actually a smartwatch. And with this smartwatch, uh, the parent can contact the children in distance. They can talk. It's, it's actually a cell phone. And they can talk. And uh, the, the children can uh, take picture of this, uh, this watch. And inside the watch, we configure a GPS. There's a GPS inside. Apart this one, there is also that one. You can attach it on the, on the pants of the children. And inside there is a GPS too. So for vehicle, we install this kind of GPS. It contains inside uh, two kind of models. There is a mod GPS models, model A and another model, uh, which is a GSM model. This can help the user to look at the, the, the car and to manage the fuel uh, consumption mm -hmm. and also to get report because Skintrack help to, to download the report of the, the traceability uh, where the, the, the car was 
and all the destinations. How are you manufacturing all the, the products? All these products come from a different company that build this GPS. So what we do, we, we, we configure the, the, the module of the GPS. We change the module uh, with technician, we change the module inside the GPS and we configure to work with our app. Um, I would like to speak about your personal connection with the mission of the of Kintrack because I think it's there's so many problems in the world right yeah. and you chose specifically this one and I would be very curious to know um, what particularly motivated you like for example how did you come into contact with the one NGO invisible children yes. how did it all come about that you personally as Cedric decided okay this is an issue that I am interested in, in exploring and in solving. First of all, what I can say is that uh, I am a geographical engineer. I was specialized in remote sensing. I create maps and I use satellite image to get the information and to, to, show, to show those information on the, on the map. I was facing problems with someone uh, in my office so he he lost his car here in kinshasa not only that person there is another colleague she also uh, lost her car so this is the pro the, the 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 things that uh get me to do something that why I, I was thinking about create an app that can help people to solve that problem. Did you always know that you wanted to start your own business? My own business? Sure. I wanted to start it. Yes. Where did your desire to start a business come from? Because um, I can speak from my own experience. Growing up in, uh, in an African family, in a Kenyan home, I was always taught that um, you go to school, you perform very well, you do your first degree, you do your master's, you get a very good job and you start to make money and then you start a family, right? I wasn't taught about entrepreneurship or I wasn't taught that you could start your own business or you could do X, Y, Z. So I'm also very curious as to where your entrepreneurial spirit, where you got that from. Something that I can say is that uh, I used to work somewhere. I used to work somewhere since 2009, about 10 years now. But it was difficult for me. Workers in Congo are not treated very well, so I decided to create my own business. How did you move from uh, working in your old job to starting your own business? Uh, what was the process for you like? Did you just one day quit your job and then, okay, I'm now on this other side, or how did you do it? Uh, this is a very long way. It is like a big challenge. So I, I started by using my salary to build my business, and it was very difficult uh, to do it. It was very, very difficult. Quit your job to do your own business uh, is something uh, I can even say dangerous because you, you're gonna lose your job and your business doesn't work. So I just wanted to, first of all, to make sure if the business that I'm, uh, I, I want to do, it's gonna be work or not. So I started by in interesting people to talk with them, to make them, them interest in what I want, I want to do. And I saw that it was, it was something good for them to get this kind of uh, software. So today, uh, I still are uh, in the process to contact companies to get them know about Kintrack 
and it's a very, very long process. Yeah, no, that makes a lot of sense. So you are uh, still in your regular uh, day job and you were collecting money, like you were saving money so that you could put it into funding your your business. Yes. And, um, and at the same time, as you were doing that, you were sort of getting word around, finding out if it actually makes sense if people would actually use the app. Yes. How did people respond? How did your family respond? How did the market respond? You know, here in Kinshasa, not, not all people use uh, the new technology. And this is a very a big thing because we, Kintrack is, is something new. We didn't have anything like that here in Kinshasa. So to make people understand about this kind of app, it is difficult. So we started with something which is available for everyone, which is the, the social uh, network. We started by creating a, so, a social uh, a network with uh, Facebook, Instagram pages. We publish the, the, the app to interest people. And also we attract other people by visiting them in the office to talk with them and also to, to ask them also to interest other people who, who don't know about uh, this app. And this is going slowly because we also do the trainings on, on to young people to make them understand. And after that, they're gonna also uh, train other people. So this is the process uh, how we, we manage to, uh, to get people know about Kintrack. Yeah. Uh, so with regards to the training, how exactly does it work? For example, I, um, I'm a parent. I have a, a child that goes to school and I'm not always picking them up from school. They come by themselves home. So I want to track them and make sure that they are safe, right? So I come to Kintrack and I say, okay, this is, this is my situation. Um, how does it move from there? Is it a monthly subscription? Is it a one-off payment and so on? If a, a parent want to, to use Kintrack in case to, uh, to secure uh, their child, uh, the children in general, is going to contact us. The parent can call us because we, we put our phone number on the, on the website and also on our old social pages, social, social network pages. The parent can contact us. And we, we're gonna let the parent know that we, we get, we got the monthly subscription. So it's, it is small money. It's, it is not, it is not cost a lot for parent to pay something for, for the service. So if, for example, um, my child, my child, <laughs> um, is not feeling safe where they are or if they realize that they've been kidnapped, yes. how can they raise an alarm to their parent? And then where does, uh, where does it go from there? Like how does Kintrack help? Okay. Um, actually, Kintrack has configured five phone number, five phone number. The first number can be the, the, the phone number of the mom, the, the, you see? And the second one can be uh, the phone number of the, of the dad. And all those three phone numbers can be for siblings, you see? And those number is inside the, the backend of the app. So it's communicated directly with with this bottom, where, where it marked SOS. So when the, the, 
the, ch the child uh, feels uh, insecure, it can just push on the SOS button and the, the watch is going to call automatically uh, the mom or the dad. And when the, the mom gets the call, he can directly look at on the app and to see exactly where the children, the, the child is. For for cars, we configured what, what we called uh, geofencing. Geofencing is actually a, an area when when the, the car go outside that area, you get an alert on on the app. And when the, the car get get back inside the area, you, you're going to get an alert. This is just because to, to, to let people know uh, if your car was stolen and it go outside the area where, which, is, which was configured on the app, uh, you know you're going to know exactly uh, where your car is located. Yeah. So what is your vision for track in the future? In the future, we are planning to work with the police. To work with the police and uh, the firefighters. Because inside Kintrack, we, we, are, we are working on another module, which is actually uh, fire tracking, to let people uh, 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 know when the fire start in in a place, and also we are planning to integrate another module called uh, accident alert uh, for car when uh, there is accident somewhere. So the police and the hospital and the firefighters gonna be alert about uh, this situation. I just wanted to ask you, you have different solutions under KinTrack. Yes. You have the tracking of uh, young people, children. You have the tracking of the vehicles against theft. Yes. But you also have the vehicle tracking for companies that just want to know how, f where are my trucks going, where are my cars going, especially for businesses. Yes. Right? So uh, as of today, which is the most important, most important part of your business? Which is giving the most business to you? Is it the uh, fleet management and tracking of vehicles for business? Is it the uh, private people that want to protect their cars from being stolen or being mm -hmm. able to recover the parts? Or is it the children uh, tracking uh, armbands, the wristbands? Actually, for now, it's a fleet management for companies. You know, this is, this is a very big part Okay. Yes. So that is the where you put, where you get most of the money from your customers, and where you put in the most development. Sure. Yes. Sure. I'm not surprised because this is making business sense. Yes. To have the um, fleet management. When you first came up with the idea for for Kintrack, did you first think, okay, let us, uh, you know, give these uh, wristbands, the smartwatches, to children, or did you first think, okay? let us prevent cars from being stolen uh, and then you moved into the other applications for uh, geolocation or uh, what was the first part of the idea? Uh, the first thing is was not actually uh, which part we are gonna, gonna uh, focus on, no. The, surface, the first thing was uh, a curiosity, something like that. Uh, I was thinking uh, start building an app I was in, in Maryland, in, in, in the US, and I wanted to, to do this, to make, to build that kind of app, but I started, first of all, to, I started on the SMS tracking. So SMS tracking is a, is a kind of a, a, a mess, messagery that you get, but on that SMS, there is a link that you need to click on the link and the map gonna show, uh, like Google map gonna show, because it's actually uh, a Google map link, something like that. But uh, coming on that uh, kind of 
um, uh, tool, uh, I didn't want it to work like this. So that's why I changed the, the model to go uh, with the app directly when the app show up and you see your car or you see your children. When the, the use of the car or children or uh, fleet management, ca management came, it was actually, first of all, the, the idea to track the car. To track the car. And I was contacted by someone uh, who also have, is also a, a startup who is working on education. So uh, I was contacted by him uh, to know how we can, what we can do uh, in case to work with uh, children and, uh, and so on. That why um, I suggested that we can also use Kintrack to, for for children. Okay. So yes. okay. So you were con you already thought about the vehicle tracking, and then someone approached you yes. and said, "Hey, is there something that we can do about these kidnappings?" And sure. Also, and then you said, "Well, sure. this might be a solution." Yes. Okay. Could you please uh, share a bit about the technical part and uh, of Kintrack and uh, yeah, the features and how they how they how they work, especially the part of the uh, fuel consumption um, in the vehicle tracking. Okay, as I said, you know the the most interesting part that people are very interested in is the fuel consumption that Kint Kintrack. Uh, can provide just because people want to 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 know exactly how what is the quantity of the the, the fuel that has been consumed related uh, with the, the 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 quantity of money that has been uh, spent to buy the fuel. You know, on the GPS we have two modules that, as I said, but on the app we. We, we want a code. We have a code that uh, can communicate directly uh, with the GPS. So the GPS is connected on the circuit of the car and it can read on the computer and get the information about the fuel consumption and the distance that the, the, the driver takes uh, in, in a place A to a place B. So that means the GPS that you install somewhere in the car, one gives you the information about where the car is. The location. Is the location, yes. but it's also connected to the board computer in such a way that sure. you can pull other information sure. about how much fuel is in the tank, sure. uh, how far it has gone, and all of acceleration probably and other, other things. Not only this, because uh, when the driver starts, he start the the engine, the GPS records the time and the date when the engine has been started, and he records any time the the driver stopped the car, and when he he, he turned off the engine, the GPS records that information. And it's going to give you like uh, the track of traveling, you know, and on that track, you're going to, the GPS mark P every places where the driver stopped the car. Yeah. Okay. Wow. That, that is a lot of information that you can get from the GPS device. Very in combination sure. With yeah. A lot of information that can track can provide. Let me ask you another personal question because it now comes up. You studied for some time in, in Maryland, right? In the United States? I studied, I studied here in Kinshasa okay, at the University here. of Kinshasa. Okay. And then I went to the University of Boston okay. uh, uh, to, do, to get my uh, kind of specialization on remote sensing and GIS. And then I went to Maryland uh, to perform a remote sensing part. Okay. And sure. then you went to the U.S. again to also work there for some time. Yeah, right? yes, to, to work with uh, uh, the geographical department at okay. the University of Maryland. 
what what made you come back to to the DRC? What made you say, okay, I'm going to start my business here in the DRC? You're a highly qualified professional. Sure. Um, you've you've studied abroad. You worked abroad for some time. What made you say, okay, I'm coming back to the DRC and start my business? Just because in DRC we have a lot of potential, and we have a lot of things to to provide or to give to to our community. You know. And this is very important because we need to train young people uh, on this kind of uh, new technology. Not a lot of people know about it. So we want to make people uh, understand what we do and also to uh, give them a lot of training about how to use Kintrack and how to, uh, to build that kind of uh, software for a lot of uh, purposes. When you talk about the trainings, because you mentioned that you do trainings on uh, on how Kintrack works and all this, do you do the trainings in companies that you work with or do you do them for anyone that is interested? How does this work? Uh, I do the training for every people who are interested in uh, geographical information system, uh, which is GIS and uh, remote sensing, what we call in French teledetection. Uh, I do those kind of training to student and professional who are w working in an, in cartography sector. Yeah. Uh, they build some maps and also uh, in env environment, environmental uh, part. But a part a part of this part of these, uh, I also provide a training to how to, to, to use Kintrack because it's a lot of component inside Kintrack that you cannot just understand in, in one day. You need to be trained to, to get it, you know, how to know how to use it. What would be your advice for uh, young people in the DRC or in Africa in general? Uh, in general, uh, I'm gonna say uh, to young people here in DRC uh, to, be, to be focused on, on the study. They have to, to, to work a lot. You know, just because after uh, the university, you, you, you will need to do something. Not only to work uh, inside a company, you can also start your own business. So this, uh, this need a kind of preparation and to focus a lot on what you want what you want to do uh, to focus a lot on your dream you see this is what, what i can say for now thank you so much for sharing. thank you what did your parents and your friends say when you said okay i'm going to start my own business now what was their reaction I was a big surprise. <laughs> it was a big surprise, but they said that they told me that you can try, but it's gonna not be easy, because in in our country, if you want to make your to start your own business, you're gonna be facing a lot of uh, problem of taxes, tax, you see, uh, to pay uh, to a lot of people. You know, there are so lot of taxes to pay. And they told me this, but I didn't, I didn't want to give up. I just wanted to, to start to go with, with my business. Yeah. Do you regret to have started your business or are you happy that you started your business? I'm very happy. I'm very happy and I, I want to continue with it. Very good. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> right. More power to you and thank you so much for your time. Thank you very much.